Last season, you met Angie, who had one of the most extreme tumors on her face we'd ever seen. It had altered her life, caused anxiety, depression. Just recently, we followed Angie into the surgery that she had waited seven long years for. I'm at the Osborne Head and Neck Clinic. I'm feeling very nervous, but also very excited to, to get it taken out. Morning, Angel. Good morning. This is the day. Uh, you ready? I'm ready. So we talked about the risk of facial paralysis, yes. and we understand that's a, a real possibility. So one of the considerations during this case is obviously facial nerve paralysis. So we do use a facial nerve monitor. So that sound you're hearing is the nerve monitor. You notice they have different sounds. So you can tell which area is alarming. If you don't plan before, if the plastic surgeon isn't here with the oncologist at the same time as the surgery, there's no way you're going to successfully put this back together for the patient where they look completely normal at the end of the case. We've got our markings and we're ready to go. We'll start by making this initial incision over the largest part of the tumor. The skin is very thin in this area. and We don't yet know where the nerves are, so we have to be pretty cautious in the beginning of this surgery until we've been able to locate at least one branch of the facial nerve. So you're hearing some background stimulation, and that means we are near nerves, but that doesn't mean that we're actually touching a nerve yet. It could be a little nerve wracking because we'll be hearing that throughout the day. I know this is a risky surgery. Uh, you know, she can lose movement of her face, uh, movement of her eye, but it's something that uh, we're willing to take a risk for because I want her better and happy again. I love my mom very much, and I want my mom to feel good about herself. We've been here since 6 o'clock this morning, and she's been in surgery since about quarter till nine, so that's about six hours, six and a half hours. We're finished with the surgery. It's been a full day of work. She's still asleep. The tumor was removed in its entirety, and you can see there's a pretty large tumor uh, just in comparison to a, a hand. So we'll send this off to pathology. It's been almost five months since the surgery, both Angie and her husband Josh join us now. And first off, I just want to ask you, because you talked so much in that when you first were on the show about how emotionally devastating it was and how you wouldn't even get out of your car. What's, what's that been like to have that, that tumor and mass removed? It's, it's been amazing. I mean, because now I go to the field, I put my hair up, I watch my daughter. I don't worry if the wind blows. So it's just changed my life. And, and I know this entire experience has been hard for you because you got the tumor removed and the hope was that it was going to be benign, yeah. but, but it not. wasn't. It's cancerous. Yeah. It has spread to my left lung, so uh, I'm having treatments um, for that and, you know, just praying that, that they can stop it. It's a very rare form of cancer. I guess my message would be if you have a small lump like I did in the beginning and I went to, you know, so many doctors and, you know, you, you get, it's benign and, you know, and other doctors couldn't do anything, but Dr. Osborne and Dr. Hamilton did. And, and, that, and the lesson, of course, learned is that you never really know if something is benign until you can test it. I do want to welcome joining us the two doctors who graciously removed Angie's tumor for free, Dr. Ryan Osborne and Dr. Jason Hamilton from the Osborne Head and Neck Institute here in Los Angeles. Gentlemen, first of all, thank you for what you did for Angie. What, what can we all learn from this? Well, I think what Angie said is accurate. Um, a lot of times we take comfort in the fact that uh, growth has been there for a long time. It's not causing pain. It's not changing anything functionally. And we kind of get lulled into the feeling that it's probably not doing any damage to us. And unfortunately, sometimes that's just not true. She actually at one point did have a benign tumor. 
the tumor that she has is an extremely rare tumor. It's a tumor that starts off benign, and unfortunately, if left to sit too long, over time, it changes. Unfortunately, this is something that was benign that went to something malignant. And the one thing, Angie, that I know you've got a long journey ahead of you, but I know a lot of other women have reached out to you now, I and I know that you really have become a champion for embracing your fears. Yeah, they, I, and I was like, you know, there's been so many that have the same condition. And just like me, they didn't want to go to the doctor. And because they said they see me on the show, that I gave them the courage to go. And that's what I would say. If it starts out small, make them do tests. Make and, them do biopsies. And also, if I may, if you have a tumor of that size and a doctor says that's nothing, go find, find a different doctor. doctor. Yeah. Yeah. It's just... Yeah. It, and also, hopefully, Angie's story has given people out there the courage to face your fears of whatever the diagnosis may be. And Angie, our thoughts and prayers are going to be with you, thank you. as you go oh, through boy. your thank treatment. You. Thank you. And Dr. Osborne, and Dr. Hamilton, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.